In this video, we'll see how one can implement a queue using two stacks. Now, let me tell you right at the beginning that this is not something that is interesting from a practical point of view, but from an intellectual point of view, it's an, it's an interesting puzzle and it makes a good interview question as well. So imagine a situation where you are working using a programming language that has a built-in stack class in it, so you can have as many stacks as you want. But now you want to create a class called Q, and that, that class has two stacks or is allowed to have two stacks as its member variables. So we have access to two stacks, and you want to use them together to mimic the behavior of uh, Q, which means first in, first out. Okay? Now, here's the idea. The idea is that we dedicate one of those two stacks to push only. Okay, so this is S1 and this is S2. And I use S1 only for uh, pushing um, keys into my data structure. Okay, so this is, I'm going to call an, a, my NQ stack. And S2 is used for uh, dequeuing. So this is my dequeue stack. Okay, S1 and S2. Now, here's the idea. The idea is that whenever I'm pushing something, I push that into S1. So for example, if my operations go like this, I start with NQ10 uh, and then NQ15 and finally NQ8. I push them in this order into S1. So 10 will be pushed first, then 15 will be pushed on top of that, and then 8 on top of that. Okay? And if there are more NQs, I keep pushing them into S1. Now, whenever it comes to DQ, I do that from the second step. Now, there are two possibilities here. It's either that the second stack is not empty, and in that case, I just pop what's on the top of the second stack, or the second stack could be empty, which is the case here at the beginning, right? So what we do in this case, when, we, when we're trying to dequeue from our queue, remember these two stacks together uh, are going to be considered as one data structure, which is representing a queue. Um, now, whenever I'm dequeuing from this entire thing and S2 is empty, what I do is the following. I repeatedly take the elements out of S1 and push them into S2. So 8 will be um, popped from, let me erase it instead of crossing it. So 8 will be popped from S1 and pushed into S2. Then 15 will be popped from S1 and pushed into S2. And finally, 10 will be popped from the first stack and pushed into the second stack. And we do this until the first stack is empty. Okay? Now, notice that in the first stack, the order of these three elements or three keys were 10 was at the bottom, then 15, and then 8. By this process of popping and pushing from S1 into S2, we reverse their order. And that's the uh, key here because when I DQ, I'm supposed to, because remember, these two together are supposed to mimic a Q, which means first in, first out. So when I DQ, what I expect to get back is the first key that I pushed into the data structure, which is 10. But the good thing is that now 10 is on the top. So then after moving or migrating all the, the keys from S1 into S2 by a sequence of pops and pushes, now I can say pop 10 from the second stack. Okay? And if I want to do DQ again, Look at, I look at S2, S2 is not empty, so I don't need to migrate anything from S1 into S2. I just pop what's on the top of S2. 
okay? And if I want to NQ again, no problem. NQ seven, NQ always happens in the first stack. So you just push that into the first stack and then you NQ again, NQ 11, 11 goes on top of seven and so on. But when we DQ, we DQ from the second stack. And as I said, there are two possibilities. It's either that the second stack is not empty, just like now. So when I DQ, I don't care what's going on in S1. I just pop what's on top of S2. But, so that's what happens when I DQ now. When I DQ, I go to S2. S2 is not empty. So I just pop the top element from S2. But if I DQ one more time, now S2 is empty. And to be able to perform DQ, we need to move all the elements from S1 into S2, but as, as, I, as I said, by a sequence of pops and pushes. So we pop 11 and we push it into S2 and pop 7, we push it into S2 until S1 is empty, which is empty now, and then we pop what's on top of S2, which is 7 which is the right answer because um, 7 was, between 7 and 11, 7 was the least recently added uh, key to our data structure. So 7 will be popped from the second stack. Okay, so that's the behavior, uh, or that, that's, the, that's the trick uh, for using two stacks to mimic a queue. Now, um, if you want to write it down, we can say that NQ, if you want to NQ some key, that's the same as push into S1. So I should say, using C++ notation, I should say S1 dot push. Right? So NQ always happens in the first stack. Now DQ is a different story. And I can, and just like C++, I can break that into two functions. Front, which returns the least recently added element without changing it. Right? So if S2 is empty, we have to do one thing. Otherwise, we have to do something else. So what, we do, what do we do when S2 is empty? We move all keys from S1 to S2 by a sequence of um, um, pops and pushes, right? So you, you need a while loop that says while S1 is not empty, uh, pop from S1 and push whatever you get into S2, right? And then you return um, S1 dot top. I'm sorry, S2 dot top, right? So that's for the case where S2 is empty, but otherwise, if S2 is not empty, then you just return S2 dot top, right? And then for removing, it's going to be the same, except that instead of returning, here we say S2 dot pop. You just remove the element on top of S2. If it's not empty, and if it is empty, you just move, you first move all the elements from S1 into S2, and then you pop what's on top of S2. Now, the final thing that I need to tell you about this to uh, have a complete description of a queue. Uh, so first of all, we have our NQ, DQ, and front, and they, they behave the way that they're supposed to, which means the first in, first out uh, behavior. And the final thing uh, left to do to have a complete queue is uh, and I need to tell you how we check whether a queue is empty. And if you think about it, when we use these two stacks to represent a queue, the queue is empty whenever both these stacks are empty. So empty, if you want to implement this in C++, would be as simple as you just return. Remember, empty is supposed to return true when the queue is empty. 
So the queue is empty when both stacks are empty. So we say s one dot empty and s two dot empty. But remember that in C plus plus we have an empty function built into the stack class. So I'm calling those on s one and s two, and if both of them are empty, then I say yes. My, my queue is also empty. And if at least one of them contains some keys, then obviously the queue is not empty. Okay, so that finishes the description of the queue. Uh, now, one final thing that we can um, investigate is the uh, runtime of these operations. Okay, so what can you say about the time complexity or runtime of uh, these uh, operations? So NQ, that's simple. Uh, NQ is just pushed into the first stack. So assuming that the stack is implemented efficiently, this can be done in order one or constant time, right? Because it's just a single push. Now, DQ is a little bit more interesting because in some cases, DQ is a simple pop from the second stack. And those cases are the cases where S2 is not empty. And if you just want to do a pop from the second stack, assuming that the stack class is implemented efficiently, it will be constant time to do that. But there is this other case for DQ and front where the first, the second stack is empty. And in that case, we have to move all the elements from the first stack into the second stack by a sequence of pops and pushes. And that is going to be time consuming because if you have n elements here, then you need a sequence of 10, op uh, I'm sorry, two times n operations, n pushes and n pops to move everything from here to here. And then you need an extra pop to, or extra top, uh, depending on whether you're doing front or DQ. Uh, so two times n plus one uh, uh, operations. So it will be order n time, so linear in time in the worst case. But similar to the previous situation where we had these bad cases that don't happen very often, it can be shown, I'm not going to show you the mathematical argument for it, but it can be shown that since this case where the second stack S2 is empty doesn't happen very frequently, and in all other cases, the runtime is constant, overall on average will be a constant time to do a DQ as well. So on average, uh, still we are dealing with constant time, but occasionally our DQ is going to be slow. Now, again, let me finish by what I said at the beginning. Um, I told you about the time complexity of these operations. I haven't told you about empty, but that's easy. Uh, let's do that as well. Empty, just checking S1 is empty, S2 is empty. Both are constant time, so constant time as well. Yeah. But the fact that we are talking about the time complexity of this implementation doesn't mean that we are going to, or anyone is going to use this in practice. As I said, this is just like a, a puzzle. Now, if this is something that you, you know um, you find interesting, uh, similar questions, uh, you can think about implementing a stack using two queues. Okay, so that's a fun problem to think about. Another one which is more challenging is here we implemented the queue using one stack. So if you want to challenge, think about this problem. Can we implement a queue using a single stack? Okay, now obviously the challenge here is that because here we had two stacks, we were able to pop and push from S1 into S2 and reverse the order of the elements. But if you only have one stack, how are you going to reverse the order and get the first in, first out behavior that is expected from the queue. So that's the challenge, implementing a queue using only one stack. And I invite you to think about that.